Well, welcome back to another video in the Contribute to Cybersecurity Risk Management. This is part three. So we're going to be covering topic number three. Now, as again, this unit is conducted under license from RTO Works. And topic three is revising risk management strategies. So here we're going to look at why we perform actions to allow us to measure the effectiveness of what we're doing. So we need to take a baseline or a benchmark of how things are performing in relation to the risk management strategies. So this allows us to effectively have a point that we measure against. There's many reasons why we want to do this. It could be because compliance with a standard or obligations to um, effective use a metric now the most common reason is we need to be able to determine whether or not what we've put in place is effective in reducing the risk remember cyber security is risk management so we need to be able to tell whether or not what we're doing is hindering or improving the risk because it will have an impact on the business. So under continuous improvement, we need to be able to come back, review and evaluate what we've got. We can only do that if we can measure it in some way. So we need to develop a set of points that we can measure, keep track of, and it has to be some form of actionable consequence. So why do we do it? We can identify threats. We can do comparisons over a long period of time. As I keep repeating, continual improvement. So we can track where the, our performance is increasing or decreasing find weaknesses in our processes without going through these steps we won't be able to tell whether or not our strategies are working so to give you some very broad examples we can turn around and say, okay, on this point of malware, we're going to expect zero infections. But in January, we've discovered two. In February, we discovered six. So this allows us some historical figures and we can see whether or not we're hitting our benchmarks and whether it's effective or not. Unauthorized access is the next example there. So we're trying to record whether any data was accessed without authorization. So in our monitoring logs, we can see there was two attempts, but neither of them were successful. 
So if you go off and have a look at the link, which is about bookmarking, oh, sorry, benchmarking the system, it'll give you some points on how to approach this process and it will be specifically in relation to cyber risk. The idea behind doing this data collection is so that we can evaluate what's happening. So we need to be able to judge whether or not the actions are successful. We need to be able to learn from what we've done and try to improve on those processes moving forward. No solution is likely to be 100% spot on first attempt. Okay. Everything changes, so we need to constantly come back evaluate and reinvent because we need to stay on top of these things technology changes processes people so we need to keep coming back and reviewing so when we do this evaluation we can do it in one of three ways by we can have a process-based evaluation where we look at the effectiveness of the processes used. Or we can have a goal-based evaluation where we judge based on how close we came to meeting our goals. And the third option there is outcomes-based. So we're looking at the results and come up with a positive and negative evaluation based on those. So the steps in evaluation are going to be to analyse. So we need to keep records of all events and activities that occur, identify problems and evaluate the impacts of those issues. We then come across the outcomes. So did the outcomes of the process match the objectives? Did we reach our desired results? So this is where benchmarking comes into play. Effectiveness. So because we've got this measuring stick, we can gauge the effectiveness of the strategies and identify any gaps. Next stage is making changes. So we've identified what's got to be improved. We need to come up with our steps to improve the process and put a time frame on it. Then we come back around to the review and repeat the process again. So we put the changes in, note the outcomes of any of the changes and then measure whether they were successful or not. So it's always going to be a loop along with a lot of other things in business where you keep coming back, re-evaluating and building on the successes. So basic process of continuous improvement is that we need to gather information, evaluate it against our objectives and gauge whether it's been successful or not. If it's not successful, we need to look at it and find out exactly why it's not successful 
and make changes so that it becomes successful. So that's where making updates to your strategies come into play. So in the other presentations, we talked about paperwork, keeping records of everything. And this is where we come back to our reporting, tracking our changes, making updates to all this documentation so that there is a record of all the steps and the decisions made so that we've got that historic record so that if anything's questioned we can show them why we did it so the risk management plan is a key document that needs to be kept up to date we need to keep track of risks as they occur whether they're increasing in frequency and under continuous improvement we can see patterns emerge over time because of this review process so this is why we keep looping back and coming back to the start going back and looking at our benchmarks, looking at the stats to see the trends because this is part of the analysis of the system. Now, it's up to you to determine whether the new information impacts within your risk range as we said everything changes so you need to stay on top of new standards that come out new business processes emerging threats from you know other areas and keeping contact and communication with the people that are doing the job. They're the ones that are going to be telling you and giving you the feedback on some of the effectiveness. So, what sort of updates could we be looking at? Well, we could change our policies. We could introduce new protocols into the system. We can reprioritize what risks we're going to critical response to. We may need to put in more controls. We can always provide better training. And we need to make sure that we get into the habit of keeping all of our documents, such as our risk registers, response plans, and asset registers up to date, because they're the documents that keep track of everything. So we can go off and do some reading and as I said if you're in the classroom we'll have a bit of a, a chat about some of this stuff a bit hard to do that while we're looking at a video oh. everybody's favorite slide <laughs> the one that says it's the end so it's not a big topic this one but it's a very important one for coming back and evaluating continuous improvement is a basic business principle and process that we need to apply to multiple areas within practice and this is what this topic's about 
It's about revising the processes and procedures we put in place, measuring them against the goals, and then evaluating it and making improvements. And, of course, keeping all that pesky paperwork up to date. All right. I will thank you for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.